Hear the word of the Lord from Elder Facey. I was praying last night and talking to God who was up late last night. And somehow I find myself studying it again. And I said, okay, God. Because one thing, the thing that I've learned with God is if you follow God, you cannot miss. You cannot miss. If you follow anybody else, it might lead you in the wrong direction lead you astray but if you follow God to somebody and said if you follow God you cannot miss cannot miss cannot miss it's in John chapter 5 verse 4 amen look at look at verse 4 and then as we already read from verse 1 to verse 10 but I want to take my thought today from verse 4 if you find it say amen, amen. Let's read verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season to the pool and troubled the water. Father, in your name, we give you glory and praise. We thank you for this day, the day that you have made. You are the mighty God, and without you there is no other God. So we lift you up today as we give you the praise and honor that is due unto you. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. I heard the reports that some of you were tremendously blessed. I told you to speak to your money, and somebody got a thousand pounds, and people just been blessed all over. Amen. Y'all said amen. amen. Some of you are still waiting on your blessing. Some of you are still thinking about whether you need to believe it or not. Amen. But if you don't believe it, you're going to still be waiting. Amen. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. Speak those things which be not as though they were. Notice the word. Speak those things which be not as though they were. And if the writer put it at were, it means it's already happened. So somebody should be rejoicing just about now because it's already done. Just touch somebody in your surrounding and tell them it's already done. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. done. St. John, amen, is a little different from the rest of the gospel writers as he put his writing, amen, mainly in different parts from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they call them the synoptic gospel in which they write and are very similar. Whatever you find in Matthew, it's in Mark, and it's in Luke, amen, based upon their perception or how they were looking at God. They were looking at God from the same angle John then takes his writing a little further because John doesn't just wrote what he have seen and what he have heard. Like the, 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 the gospel writers, they wrote what they have seen and what they have heard, but John wrote what he have seen, what he have heard, and what had been revealed. Everybody said revealed. Because it's op he opened up this passage in John 1, one said John 1 and 1 and said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Touch somebody and said that's revelation y'all, that's revelation. So he wrote what had been revealed unto him. Mm. Let's take your time with me, we're going to get somewhere in a minute. St. So John chapter 5 now, it tells a very, a very familiar story about this man that was sitting at the pool of Bethesda. The pool of Bethesda, amen, which means Bethesda, it is described as the house of mercy. 
Amen. So he was sitting at the place where mercy was supposed to be given out. And the Bible declared that a certain man, it didn't have time to go to trivial things, to mention his name or his family heritage, but it just called him a certain man. Amen. Because his name wasn't important to the to the, the contents of the text. His, 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 his heritage, his family background wasn't important. But amen, what he had was important. What he was going through was important. And his location was important. Look at somebody and say it was important. Ah, uh, it also tells you the duration of time that he was sick. The Bible said that he was sick for 30 and 8 years. Oh, it didn't say now, let me make this clear, that he was at the pool for 38 years. The Bible declared that he was sick for 38 years. How long he was at the pool, that's a different thing. But for him to be sick for 38 years, and Jesus walked the face of the earth for 33 years, it means that he was sick five years before the birth of Christ. Lord, y'all call me the preacher. I feel a little preachish today. Five years before the birth of Christ. And so is it. Can you then imagine waiting on your deliverance and the deliverer that's supposed to deliver you haven't been born as yet? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, God. And not just that, but even though when he was born, in those days, to be a priest or to do the work of the priest, you have to reach the age of 30 before you can pick up the mantle and go forth and perform the work. So even though the deliverer was born, he couldn't get happy yet because he still got 30 years to go. So he had to wait on Jesus until John saw him coming up and said, Behold the Lamb of God who come to take away the sins of the world. My topic here today is, it's in the trouble. Look at somebody and say, it's in the trouble. Amen. John saw him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who come to take away the sins of the world. He became the Lamb and then became the high priest, which the high priest received the Lamb and then became the great intercessor, which the intercessor after the high priest received the lamb uh, he would wash his hand and go into the holy of holies uh, and become the intercessor uh, so if he was the lamb turn around become the priest uh, that means he received himself and then after receive himself went in the holy of holies uh, and start praying to himself uh, so he has got to be God all by himself <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, and so is it then, the man who was impotent, uh, and if you study the Bible, it will tell you history, will try to explain to us that he couldn't walk. Uh, he made all kind of design, all kind of things, uh, amen, trying to get in the water, uh, because the Bible declared that an angel uh, would discharge from heaven and come down uh, at a certain season. Everybody said, a certain season. Uh, it didn't say what time of the year it was. It could be spring, summer, autumn, or winter, but it was one of the seasons uh, that an angel would enter the water and trouble the water, uh, and whosoever first uh, stepped in the water will be made whole. Uh, can you imagine then after 38 years uh, of sickness and don't know how long uh, he spent at the pool but trying everything uh, to receive healing uh, from God. Uh, he must have stayed at the edge sometime, and by the time he could have rolled over, somebody stepped before him. Uh, uh, God, he must have made another plan that next season uh, is going to be my time. Uh, have you ever find yourself in that position before? Uh, that every year you're telling God, this is my season, uh, and this is my hour, and this is my time.
time. Uh, but I understand certain things with time uh, and season because the Bible said uh, to everything there is a season. Uh, so then, based upon Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, it tells us that season carry things. Uh, and so then it said a time to every purpose. Uh, so if season carry things, then time carry purpose. Uh, it is the movement of time that caused season to change. Uh, but time, amen, constantly go along. Uh, time will just revolve, but season changes. Uh, and so God said then if things uh, changes, but purpose never change. Uh, because he puts your purpose in the time. Uh, what is your purpose? Uh, my purpose is to praise him and to live for him uh, in spite of the season. Uh, look at somebody and say, even though your season change, uh, but your purpose uh, will never change. Uh, even if I ain't got no money right now, uh, I still have a purpose, uh, and my purpose is to lift him up uh, and to give him uh, some praise. Uh, can somebody open up your mouth and praise him? Oh God, uh, and so is it this man uh, it must have planned and make all kind of plans. Uh, but it seems like it never worked out for him uh, until here come the man uh, who he didn't even knew. Uh, the Bible said Jesus turned up and know that he was there a long time now. Uh, he must have passed everybody and reached over to the man. Uh, and Jesus looked at the man uh, and said, do you want to be made whole? Uh, the man, amen, didn't answer him uh, based upon what he was going through and uh, based upon his experience uh, that he had before. Uh, because it seems to me, and when you read this, uh, that a lot of folks must have tricked him before. Uh, and now here comes Jesus. Uh, he must have believe this is another trick. Uh, somebody is trying to get him there uh, before me. Uh, he said, sir, I ain't got no friends. Uh, it sounds like the man was in a state of depression. Uh, it sounds like the man, uh, a man was in a state uh, where he's always almost losing his mind. Uh, he was frustrated uh, because he tried everything and everything failed. Uh, and here comes Jesus who was standing before him. Uh, he said, sir, the water is not even trouble. Uh, so what in the world are you talking about? Uh, Jesus didn't talk about the water. Uh, but he looked at him and said, do you want to be made whole? Uh, up until now. The man didn't answer the question. He stopped taking out his rod. He stopped taking out his feelings upon Jesus. I ain't got nobody. Because every time the water is trouble, he said, somebody stepping before me. What the man is saying, there is no order at this place. I've been here before most of you. And everybody come and get married before me. I've been sitting on the married bench for so long uh, and raising my hand. Uh, I've been bridesmaid more than everybody else. Uh, I've been flower girl more than everybody else. Uh, I've been supporting everybody else's wedding. Uh, and it seems like uh, my time will never come. Uh, but every now and then here comes a handsome chap. Uh, came in the church, walked past me uh, and picked the next person. Uh, and I felt like it was my time. Oh, God. But I understand. Because when you go to the doctor and they give you an appointment, it's your time, but it's not your turn. Time is different from turn. Your time, honey. You've got a 10 o'clock appointment. But when you get there at 10, somebody else is already there. And the doctor is looking after the person. Huh? You gotta wait your turn, honey. Huh? Tell somebody it might be your season. Huh? It might be 